What titan could have possibly been large enough to create the bone bridge that we see in the New Empire? Although the scene itself is rather brief, we visit the Hollow Earth and we get to see the remains of an ancient, primordial titan that dwarfs even Godzilla in sheer size. The bridge that Kong crosses is made of the spinal column of a long-dead titan, which has left many to wonder just which titan could have this belonged to, and do we know of anything of the lore that can identify this spinal column? Well, stick with us today, Heralds of the Titans, and let's comb through a few different options and see if we can't figure out exactly who this skeleton may have once belonged to. First, let's begin with examining what we know about the skeleton and evaluate some of the bones that are visible. While we may not be professional archaeologists, we can make a few deductions based on what we can see. So far, the most prominent features are the fangs embedded into the side of the cliff face, two eye sockets, and the rib cage protruding down to the chasm. With this information, we have a few different options, so let's first cover the idea that this was once a giant reptile that roamed the ancient landscape. The Monsterverse has been very consistent with tying in the monsters into the real-world mythology and legends from across the globe. Many of the myths that we hear from across the world were actually inspired by the presence of titans, so we can therefore use this precedent and examine various other myths that might explain this particular titan skeleton. While we don't have an exact name yet, one possibility is that this was the serpent responsible for inspiring one of the most common stories across the world, that being the trope of the evil snakes that appear across different world mythologies. We know that Ghidorah himself inspired many of these myths, those that depict evil reptiles, including the idea of the Hydra in the ancient Greece and various dragons in East Asia cultures. There are, however, a few snakes that, based on legend, dwarf even Ghidorah in terms of physical size and seem to more closely resemble the skeleton rather than Ghidorah. So let's talk about some of these stories and evaluate whether or not this option makes sense before moving on to other ideas. Across different cultures, there are various depictions of a large snake in multiple religious mythologies. Some of the most notable, such as Jormungdung from Norse mythology, Apophis from Egyptian legend, and of course, from Judeo-Christian teachings. On the surface, they seem to bear a striking resemblance to the skeleton, and surprisingly enough, snakes do in fact have rib cages. Each of these snakes are known for being outright malevolent with virtually no redeeming qualities, and above all else, they are defined by their titanic size. We know that titans are already massive, but these entities are on a different league altogether. The Norse mythology snake was known as the Midgard Serpent, and he is known for wrapping himself around the entirety of Midgard. Originally from Jotunheim, the land of the giants, the serpent was cast out to Midgard by Odin when it was prophesied that he would become a force of great evil. At this point, the earth was believed to be flat, and the Midgard serpent acted as the barrier between the edge of the world and the void beyond, eating his own tail to contain the realm. When Ragnarok loomed ever closer, the snake realized his tail and unleashed a mighty flood in order to join the forces of chaos against the gods as they lay siege to the realms. This sets a precedence, however, of a giant snake leading the forces of chaos against the gods in order to stage a coup against the reigning pantheon. We see this again in ancient Egypt, when Apophis was depicted as the embodiment of chaos and was the evil that was said to devour the sun. According to the original myth, the sun god Ra would venture into the underworld during that night, defended by the gods as he made his nightly voyage against the forces of chaos. Every morning he escaped, which symbolized the new sunrise, and thus began a new day until he made the journey all over again. As winter fell though, days became shorter and nights became longer, and the Egyptians believed that this was a time of great weakness for Ra, which explains why his journey took longer than normal. One day, though, it was fated that Apophis would break free from the underworld and consume the sun, casting the world into eternal darkness. This imagery is found across many cultures, and in the Monsterverse, it's possible that a giant reptile was responsible for the inspiration of these myths. As far as Godzilla's extended lore, though, this leaves us with a couple of different options. In the 1967 Toho film King Kong Escapes, we are introduced to a monster simply known as the Giant Sea Serpent. This bears a striking resemblance to the skeleton that we see in the Hollow Earth, and other potential candidates include the giant boa from 1976's King Kong, or perhaps even an ancient war bat similar to the ones that we see in Godzilla vs. Kong, although it would have to be much larger than any of the modern war bats that we currently know of. If this is the case, then perhaps for now we can refer to the serpent as Apophis, though this is just a placeholder until it's either given a name or proven to be a different kind of titan entirely. 
Regardless of what exactly this creature is though, it does prove something captivating. It proves that in the ancient past, titans were even less limited in their growth potential than they are now, and the ceiling for just how big a titan could actually get was much higher than it is today. We learn from Dr. Sarazawa that in the distant past, the surface of the earth was 10 times more radioactive than it is now, and when this radiation began to taper away, titans receded deeper within the hollow earth. What this implies though, is that the hollow earth may have been much more radioactive than it is today also, which could mean that the hollow earth was once the epicenter of titanic radiation. The hollow earth is saturated with this energy today, but millions of years ago, it seems to have given way to much larger and potentially more powerful titans. It also leaves us with the possibility that titans of this magnitude are still out there somewhere, and possibly could still be there in the present day. So far, the largest physical titans that we've seen are Godzilla and Shimo, and even when Godzilla absorbs large swaths of radiation, he doesn't grow too much larger in his physical size. What this massive ribcage is is still a big mystery, but if we pull from real-world mythology, it is likely a malevolent snake of some form. But anyway, my friends, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on our theory? And what are your thoughts on this massive ribcage in Godzilla x Kong? As always, my friends, thank you so much for visiting the channel today. Hit that subscribe button, and I hope you're having a great one.